What is good, Battlefielders? This is Kuzu Ranger coming at you from Japan. Now, in today's video, I've got some new footage for you from the Close Quarters download content, which means I have bought the PS3 Premium Service. Now, although this is a pretty interesting Gun Masters game, I won't tell you the end result. What I wanted to focus on more is giving a broad uh, weapon review of all the new weapons that are available from this map pack. And uh, obviously I've only had a few days actually to test them out because there was that glitch with the PS3 uh, North American accounts where we could not even get into the maps even though we downloaded them early. That was really stupid on DICE's part. But anyways, now it's working in a... Uh, let me give you my reviews and uh, tell you what I think. Now, just a quick note before I start, if I ever mention best or worst or highest or lowest, what I'm referring to is the best or worst, whatever, within that gun class. So if it's a carbine, then I mean compared to other carbines. I don't mean all kit weapons. I don't mean other classes overall. I just mean that one specific class that I am actually reviewing. Also, I'm going to give just the general stats, um, what I found from the Simtech. I didn't give all the stats because you can go look yourself. I don't have time to do every single one of them, but there is plenty of stats. There are plenty of juicy stats. I kind of picked the ones that I thought that were most relevant and uh, the ones that are most significant and biggest changes compared to the other weapons in its class. So here we go. The ACWR is an interesting gun for the engineer class. It takes one more shot to kill a close has a smaller mag and has near worst hit fire among carbines, though a laser sight should help out. In terms of damage, rate of fire, and reload, it kind of resembles the AS valve for the all kit guns. The low recoil and higher damage at range make the ACWR better than other carbines at range, and those faster reloads sure can help. For purely close quarters battles though, I would still choose the M4A1. But for anything else, including medium range or various encounters, if you don't know what's going to happen, I would take a very serious look at the ACWR for one of the best carbines in the game. The MTAR-21, also for the engineer class, is clearly like the FAMAS of the carbines. It has the fastest rate of fire and best hip fire, meaning it will cause a lot of damage up close for those first 30 rounds. Thankfully, it's balanced by horrendous reload times and high recoil, so it shouldn't be a threat from afar. It will be a dangerous weapon in the hands of running gun kamikaze spraying all over up close. I expect this to be the new gun of choice for its perfect harmony of kill once, then die immediately after. Not my type of gun, though I did love the tar from Modern Warfare 2 for any of you Call of Duty fans. Next is the AUG A3 for the Assault class. Don't underestimate this gun. It has low upwards recoil coupled with a slowish rate of fire making it very easy to handle. The fastest bullet speed is a bonus for this accurate gun at range. And it's tied for best hip fire which helps balance its rate of fire weakness up close. It has the same first shot multiplier as the AEK in F2000 though, which can never be a good thing. If I had to choose, I would say it nearly resembles the L85A2, though with slightly higher rate of fire and more recoil. Potentially a very good weapon at medium ranges if you know how to handle it. Also for the assault class is the SCAR L, which stands for the long barrel. This is another gun that will probably get overlooked. Most will be turned off immediately by the slow rate of fire high shot multiplier and mediocre reload time. Yet that same slow rate of fire coupled with a very stable and low recoil means it's also one of the easiest guns to handle in full auto. Poor for up close running gun, but could be valuable in a sport style role. To be effective with this, you need to drop back and play a little more patient, not go and ramble all up in people's faces. Next is the L86A2 for the support class. This is a good addition for mobile support. It's basically exactly in the middle between the other two 45 clip LMGs. It has a slower reload, but better recoil and first shot multiplier compared to the M27 IAR. 
It has a better reload, but worse upward recoil and first shot multiplier compared to the RPK-74M. Having the best hip fire among any LMG, a good rate of fire and lower recoil should make this a contender for one of the best true running gun LMGs in the game. Take some time to check it out. The LSAT, also for the support class, is a hard one for me to rate precisely. It is tied for best recoil and nearly best reload times among the six 100 mag LMGs. It also has the best recoil decrease, yet it has the second worst shot multiplier, so choosing it really depends on if you want a lower damage and more manageable 100 mag LMG, a higher damage but more inaccurate 100 mag LMG, or a normal damage assault rifle like LMG with a small magazine. The LSAT could be decent if the player could control the recoil properly, but I just see the too many variations in LMGs to really give anyone a true advantage over the, <coughs> over the other. Excuse me. Next up is the M417. On paper this gun has some awesome potential. At first glance it looks like a semi-auto on steroids. It has the same damage range at 50 to 37. It's tied for best reload time has low recoil and it has double the ammunition. It also gets a big recoil decrease advantage over all other 10 mag semi-automatic rifles. And if the stats are correct currently it suffers from the worst effects from suppressive fire 33 percent more than any other gun in the game. It also has the worst ADS spread of all the sniper rifles yet this is still worlds apart much better than any other weapon type. Take it from a player like me with over 66,000 SKS kills, this gun does not compare to the SKS. They fire completely different, their recoil patterns are different, even the slight rate of fire makes a big difference. This is not a spam fire gun, it is just a better souped up version of the semi-auto 10 mag rifle. Also for the recon class is the JNJ-90. Now in my opinion there's really no need for another bolt action rifle. But if you want to know, here we go. It's tied for the second worst rate of fire among sniper rifles. It's tied for the worst overall reload time out of any sniper rifle at 2.9 to 4.7 seconds. Although it does have the advantage of a 20 to 70 millisecond better velocity compared to the other 10 mag bolt actions, which does help get the bullet on target and get the kill faster. Overall though, the three main differences, the rate of fire, velocity and reload, are really quite minimal between all of the sniper rifles. So whatever you choose is just kind of not going to make a difference. Choose what you like most. One benefit to the other is going to be a disadvantage to the other, so I mean it all kind of balances out in the end. I really don't think there's need for fucking four bolt action rifles. Next up for the all kit weapons is the SPAS-12. Now. There's really not much to say here. Well, what is it? It's a pump action shotgun that is 92% identical to the 870 MCS. Only minor differences are that the SPAS-12 has a tiny rate of fire advantage at 0.4 versus 0.48 seconds, while the 870 MCS gets one more pellet per shell at 11 versus 12 pellets. That is the only difference. Everything else is 100% identical. Wow, what a waste. And now the final gun for review is the M5K, also for the all kit weapon. Now this is the hardest one for me to analyze since it's the only one I haven't touched. You can only wonder what the huge recoil, medium first shot multiplier, and beneficial big recoil decrease will all add up to in the end. If the stats are correct, this is the only non-pistol in the game to suffer zero effects from suppressive fire. That means when it's taking suppressive fire, it's not going to be blurred, it's not going to hit in inaccuracies. Wow. Either way, it will take some very good results to make me replace my AS Val as my go-to PDW. Alright guys, so there you have it. This has been my quick review of the new weapons in the Close Quarters download pack. Keep in mind though, I've only played a couple of days. That's as best as I could have done. I have researched these things, they're not just based on bullshit uh, assumptions. I have gone through the stats, I have compared it to the other weapons within its class, 
and I've tried to come up with valid reasons with proof of why something's better or worse than something else. But of course, no matter what stats say, what really matters is how you handle it in the game. So if you have different opinions than me, if things work out much better for you, great. I'm happy for you. I'm sure I'm going to improve with some of the weapons that I said were shit. And I'm sure that some of the weapons I said were good will turn out being crap. So anyways, this has been Kuzu Ranger. Hope you found this vid helpful. If it did, please give me a sub and a like. Give me some comments. Give me some critique. I'll get back to you. Thanks for watching the vid, guys. See you next time. Peace.